It Ends With Us, a movie adaptation of a novel of the same name, was released in theaters earlier this August. And despite covering a lot of dark themes and the central conflict revolving around domestic violence, you probably wouldn't have gotten this from just watching the marketing material that they put out. This material very much centered florals because the main character of the movie and the book is a florist. It also centered fashion, especially Blake Lively's fashion, because she is considered a fashion icon, especially for her looks in the Met Gala. The dissonance between the subject matter of the film and the way it's been presented to us has caused quite the controversy in the past few weeks, with people calling out the cast for almost trivializing the subject matter for the purposes of marketability. The thing that I think is often left out in these videos and conversations online that we are having is that this is a romance movie, right? And it is based on a romance book, a very famous one. And that kind of led me to the question of, is it really the marketing that's at fault? or is it something within the book itself? Is the marketing actually misleading like some people claim? Or is this dichotomy between romance and domestic violence endemic to the source material? And if so, then bypassing the movie's marketing, how is the book itself marketed historically? And lastly, it got me thinking about romances and love stories versus stories about trauma. And should they ever mix? Can it ever work? Can it ever give us a new perspective? What is the benefit of telling these stories as romances, if there is any? In this video, I hope to discuss all those questions and more. So I will be discussing topics like domestic violence and pedophilia later on. So if those make you uncomfortable, then please click off this video now. Because I will be talking about quite sensitive topics in this video, I also ask you to please remain civil in the comment section and to have respectful discussions. First, I want to lay out the facts, and this will mean that I am going full spoilers for It Ends With Us. For the purposes of this video, what you need to know is that our main character, Lily Bloom, is a florist who is in Boston, and she falls in love with Ryle Kincaid, who is a, the sexy, rich neurosurgeon. At the same time as all this is happening, she is reintroduced to Atlas Corrigan, her first lover ever from her childhood. As she gets reacquainted with Atlas, a different side to Ryle starts showing, in part due to his insecurity about Lily and Atlas's relationship, uh, as well as his own drinking, and he becomes abusive towards her, reminding her very much of the abuse that she saw her father dish out on her mother while growing up. The book ends with Lily giving birth to Ryle's daughter, but leaving him as well for Atlas, and the title, It Ends With Us, stems from when Lily tells her daughter that this cycle of abuse and domestic violence ends with the two of them, that she's breaking the cycle of violence. The it is the cycle of domestic violence, if you will. So now that you have that background knowledge, clearly romance and violence is blended in the book as well as it was in the movie and in the marketing in the movie. But then the question is, to which does it lean more? Was Colleen Hoover trying to write more of a romance story or more of a story about domestic violence and trauma and breaking those cycles of abuse? To answer this question, I think we should first look at Colleen Hoover's past and her other writing. So a criticism that she does often receive is that she uses trauma and traumatic events in her books as a source of drama for the characters. And some people would say that these topics aren't handled with enough care because it's almost almost as if they're there to add spice to the plot, make it more exciting. And because of this, these topics are not handled with as much care as they should be. Personally, I've only read four Colleen Hoover books. That would be Ugly Love, It Ends With Us, November 9th, and Verity. So I don't know if I've read enough of her body of work to take a stance or to make up my mind definitively. But if you have read other Colleen Hoover books, please do let me know and let me know where you stand on whether the trauma is there and it adds to to the story or if it's mostly there for shock value. A counterpoint to what I just said though about Colleen Hoover entering this book and treating the subject matter more frivolously though is the fact that it is partially based on her childhood growing up and her parents relationship. She even has a introduction to the book where she talks a little bit about that personal connection that she has. But now let's talk about the marketing of the book itself. When I talk about the marketing, I'm going to be talking about the cover as well as the 
thing that you can read at the back of the book, the description of the book. I personally would say that the book definitely leans much more into the romance aspect than it does into the violence aspect. The book cover has these broken flowers, even though they are broken, which I think hints at there being some sort of a violent, some sort of traumatic event. I don't think that a casual person in the bookstore just walking past this cover would think, oh yeah, this is a book about domestic violence. They would probably think, oh cute, it's a romance story. And then when we look over at the book description, please pause the video uh, so you can read the full of it. But in my opinion, it sells the book as a primarily love triangle story between Lily and the sexy neurosurgeon versus the childhood best friend lover sort of guy. Also, something that I think is was definitely an interesting choice was the line, when Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened, because it almost puts it in the reader's head to be expecting that Atlas is the destructive force in the relationship, whereas sure, maybe to some extent he makes Ryle insecure, but the root of the issue is still Ryle, right? Like he still is the abusive husband. Then a few years back, there was also a coloring book debacle that I would be remiss not to mention. Essentially, they decided to put out a coloring book for It Ends With Us and people were quite offended by that because why would you put out a coloring book about a book based on domestic violence? In the end, the book didn't end up coming out, but it was still a greatly discussed topic online. And so taking all of this into account, I would say that definitely It Ends With Us leans more, historically, at least in the past, has leaned more into the romance aspect when marketing this book. I understand that now, especially right now with the movie coming out, there's a lot more talk about the domestic violence side of this book. Justin Baldoni, the director, has been very vocal in almost every single interview that I've seen of him uh, talking about the domestic violence, and he very much says this film is for the victims, this is for the women who need that final push to leave, and things like that. And online, with the recent backlash that this cast has been receiving, I think the conversation has turned more towards the domestic violence side of it, but even though that, that is the case now, I don't think this has been the case historically. Anecdotally, I read this book the year after it came out, and so when I picked it up, I thought that it was a romance. I wasn't as chronically online back then, but that is very much what, at least anecdotally, I have seen. And all of this brings me to, should romance be using domestic violence as a plot point or as a source of conflict in the plot? And there are two sides to this, right? Because there are some people that will say that romances that involve domestic violence tend to romanticize it if it isn't handled correctly. I do agree to some extent that It Ends With Us does romanticize it, maybe a little bit, because, you know, Ryle is this super hot successful neurosurgeon and it's almost as if he's so tortured because there's this plot point uh, where he won't date any woman, but then he'll date Lily. And sometimes I got the vibe that it was almost as if that we are supposed to be questioning, oh, can she fix him? Can she make the monster human? You know, that sort of thing. And I don't know if it was handled the best, but at the same time, I feel like to some extent, because we are there with Lily and because we as the audience are also supposed to fall in love with Ryle at the start and we are supposed to be questioning, you know, oh, he won't attack her again. He didn't mean that. Did he actually mean to hit her? Did he actually mean to do all those things? I think that we are supposed to be in in that situation there with Lily uh, in her head. You're gaslighting yourself too, right? but that's the point, right? Everyone, anyone can be a domestic abuser. It also creates empathy in the reader for the victim because you start to understand why it can be so hard to leave, why you know you want to give this person that you love another chance, why it is so hard to tear everything down and just leave when you've built a life with them. Personally, I read this book, again, a couple years ago now, and so I don't remember every single detail. From what I remember, I think this book could have handled the domestic violence in a slightly better way. But this is where I want to give a counter example that of a book that is one of my favorite books ever of all time. It is very critically acclaimed and it does a similar thing, I think, to It Ends With Us and it is called My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Again, I'll be doing full spoilers for My Dark Vanessa, but to be honest, I don't think this is a book that you read for the narrative. This is a book that you read for the experience. 
This is a book that I am loath to recommend though because it is very graphic. And so if you're sensitive to things like rape, grooming, and pedophilia, do not read this book because it will be highly triggering for you. But let's go into the summary. My Dark Vanessa follows Vanessa Y, our eponymous character, in two timelines. In the present timeline, it's 2017, the height of the Me Too movement, and her old English professor has been recently accused of being a sexual predator by another girl with whom Vanessa went to school with. And then the other timeline follows Vanessa as she is 15, as she is enrolled in the high school, and she first meets this professor and ultimately becomes his victim. The reason why I think it is somewhat comparable to It Ends With Us is because this past storyline of her first meeting the teacher and being groomed by him is very much written like a romance. There's a lot of descriptions of, you know, how he talks about her maple leaf hair, of him reading under the tree, and how excited Vanessa is to be finally noticed by someone. I don't know if I would say that it's essentially a romance between her and the teacher. I'd say it's more so a romance between the way he makes her feel, because she is disgusted in many of the scenes that she is with him but it's the way that he makes her feel. Anyway, it's a very interesting book. I highly, highly recommend that you read it. I have also attached a review by The Atlantic and by The New York Times in the description that I highly recommend you check out because they go into this beautiful, terrifying analysis of My Dark Vanessa. Where I make the comparison between It Ends With Us and My Dark Vanessa is that I'd say It Ends With Us is mainly a romance, with trauma being secondary to that, whereas My Dark Vanessa is mainly a story about trauma that utilizes romance as a way of getting you into Vanessa's head and living the experience the way that she lived it. it. It's so hard not to get caught up in all the things she's feeling until you remember that you're reading about a 42-year-old man, a teacher, grooming a 15-year-old child. In a sense, this is a response to Lolita, a book that My Dark Vanessa is very much in conversation with throughout its entirety. But where Lolita shows the perspective of Humphrey Humphrey, the pedophile, My Dark Vanessa shows Lolita's perspective. The Atlantic says that My Dark Vanessa is a minefield in which language itself has been weaponized. And it is weaponized because Vanessa is not a perfect victim. And you are reading her thoughts and the way she justifies things to herself, the things she notices, the things she doesn't notice. And it's, it's disgusting, but I think it adds something new to the conversation. You know, we can ask, how do victims justify this to themselves? Why doesn't every victim come out and speak about this? And she romanticizes the relationship. She says at one point, I feel forced over a threshold, thrust out of my ordinary life into a place where it's possible for grown men to be so pathetically in love with me, they fall at my feet. The New York Times in their review phrased it as Vanessa protects the idea of them being in love because she needs it. She needs it for her mental sanity. And in fact, I think the climactic scene at the end of the novel with her therapist, if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. But that's where she, for the first time, asks herself, well, if my life wasn't a love story, if this isn't a love story, then what, what is it? What has my life been? And it's, it's a tragic scene and it's a powerful scene and... It's the sort of thing that stays with you forever. So once again, this is a very highly critically acclaimed novel that also deals with very traumatic subject matter. It also uses romance as an entry point into the victim's head and for us to empathize with this victim in a way that perhaps we wouldn't be able to if we just read statistics or just read an interview of, some, of someone describing their experience post the fact. Which is not to say that we shouldn't read victims, real victim stories. I'm just saying that this brings a different perspective. And when it comes to the marketing of My Dark Vanessa, I'd argue that it is marketed as a serious novel. Um, I think that both the covers work. I think the black and white one is definitely better because it conveys the tone. The other cover, the orange one, despite the bright pastel colors, I don't know if it would be mistaken for a romance because the hair falling down and covering certain aspects interacting with the title I think it gives a sense of mystery and the title itself My Dark Vanessa I think is it, it lets you know that there's something more at play than just a romance but again I'm very curious how you would read these two covers and why do you think the orange one decided to go for this pastel girly 
presentation. When it comes to the back cover description of My Dark Vanessa, again, please pause this if you want to read the full thing. It says, My Dark Vanessa juxtaposes memory and trauma with the breathless excitement of a teenage girl discovering the power her own body can wield, a masterful portrayal of troubled adolescence and its repercussions that raises vital questions about agency, consent, complicity, and victimhood. In a sense, I'd say My Dark Vanessa wears what it is on its sleeve much more than it ends with us. And it makes me wonder about how marketing has influenced the way we as readers have approached those two books. Is it really that My Dark Vanessa focuses so much more on the trauma than it ends with us? Or do I perceive it that way? Because when starting My Dark Vanessa, I was primed that this is a story about Peter Julia. Or maybe it's just the matter of the subject matter. I'm not too sure. I don't know. Maybe I would have approached It Ends With Us from a totally different angle if I knew going in that this is a story about domestic violence. I'm not too sure. I think also it's very obvious from the start what My Dark Vanessa is about. Whereas with It Ends With Us, if you skip over the introduction and the dedication, you might not know that it is about domestic violence until you're a good ways into the book. I don't know. I'm curious about what you think about the way marketing affects our perception of a work of art in the end. But I'm also curious, in your opinion, why is My Dark Vanessa so much more respected? Is it, is it because Kate Elizabeth Russell's prose is much better than Colleen Hoover's? And personally, I do think it is. Is it because literary fiction is often given much more artistic credence than romance is? Or is it the serious marketing that My Dark Vanessa had versus the girly pop night out where your florals approach taken to the it ends with us image? This brings me to discussing the benefits and drawbacks of using the two marketing approaches. The first one I will call romance-centered marketing and the second approach I will call trauma-centered marketing. For the intents of this video, whether you disagree or not, that's okay. I'm going to say that It Ends With Us uses romance-centered marketing and My Dark Vanessa used trauma-centered marketing. First, let's talk about the romance-centered marketing and It Ends With Us. I think that since It Ends With Us presented itself as a romance story first and foremost, it definitely had a broader appeal because more people will pick up a romance than they will a book that is very blatantly about domestic violence. Whether it is because people don't want to read about that, whether it's because people can be triggered by that, and romance is one of the most popular genres, one of the more accessible genres as well. So I think more people would pick up a romance book than a book that is very blatantly about domestic violence. However, a drawback of this more romance-centered marketing, especially for books like that have such heavy subject matter, is that I think it's kind of irresponsible, you know? Um, people will be very blindsided by the very graphic abuse scenes. Like there's that one stairwell scene and the couch scene that has stayed with me ever since I read it. And for context, again, this is just anecdotal. I was 13 when I read this book because at the time Colleen Hoover was quite popular on booktube. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, she's the new romance girl book person. I kind of thought she was kind of like Emily Henry, though, you know, Emily Henry wasn't really a thing at that time. But that's kind of the vibe that I was expecting from It Ends With Us. And so I was a 13 year old and I, and I picked up the book expecting a cutesy romance story. And instead I got my first exposure to domestic violence written in a book. I don't know that if this was the best introduction for me, especially at that age to such a serious topic. And also centering romance so heavily in the marketing, I think does make at least me feel that was the domestic violence just there for the drama meant to spice up the book at times? I don't know, but why wasn't it more present in the marketing if it was supposed to be so central to the discussion around the book. But then let's talk about the benefits and drawbacks of the trauma-centered marketing that was used with My Dark Vanessa. First benefit that I can think of is that readers are primed for what this book will be about. The writer did clearly a lot of research and wanted to open up a conversation and for the audience to realize that it isn't always easy for the victim to come to terms with the fact that they are a victim, for them to recognize what happened to them, to be grooming Peter. Yeah, rape. Because the book is marketed as li a literary fiction that is a response to both Nabokov's Lolita and the Me Too movement idea of all women should speak up, readers' expectations are more in tune and ready for the messaging. And I think that also when we do transition into the past timeline with the romance style flashbacks, readers will 
faster pick up on, okay, this is a stylistic choice. It's supposed to shock you, disgust you, and gain a new understanding of victims that you probably wouldn't have had before reading this story. I think centering the trauma so heavily in the marketing for this book also inspired a lot of trust in the author that she was trying to do justice to the story and that she was taking it seriously as well. And so therefore, as readers, we should take it seriously. But this style of marketing, I don't think is all good either. And a big drawback of it is that Romance is a much more successful genre than literary fiction. Although My Dark Vanessa was quite popular in booktube when it got released and got loads of critical praise, it reached nowhere the level of the success of It Ends With Us or other Colleen Hoover books. It Ends With Us was the best-selling book in 2022 and 2023. It outsold the Bible. And so this makes me wonder, was It Ends With Us more valuable for victims of domestic violence or was My Dark Vanessa more valuable for victims of rape and pedophilia? Because yes, although I would argue that My Dark Vanessa treats its topic much more seriously and presents it in a more thought-provoking, empathetic way, you can't argue that It Ends With Us hasn't had a huge impact because it's just, it's gotten the topic of domestic violence in front of more people's eyes. So since it's getting this topic so much more exposure, does that make it more valuable on the mass scale? Even though it doesn't have as much care and nuance in my eyes at least, as my dark Vanessa? So that's another question that I have for you. Is it better to get the topic discussed more to get it out in front of more people's eyes? Or is it more important to treat it with care and explore it in a new, nuanced, careful way, but at the expense of not getting it in front of more people's eyes? And this is from the authorial side, but also from the publisher side, right? Because because I do think that because I do think that the way we market a book very much also plays a part in how that book will then be perceived and talked about online and in literary circles. So before I end this video, I want to leave you thinking about two things. The first is I want you to reflect on how marketing a book will affect our response to it. Are some messages, are some topics too serious and difficult for romance marketing? Because when talking about My Dark Vanessa, I discussed a student-teacher relationship. I thought of other student-teacher relationships, but that were marketed in the romance-centric manner. And I thought of two. The first one is pretty famous from Pretty Little Liars, the relationship between Arya and Ezra that starts off from the start and has been heavily criticized over the years, especially during the later seasons of Pretty Little Liars. Something that I do think is necessary to mention is that Arya was supposed to be 16 and Ezra was supposed to be 24. So that's not quite the same age difference as 15 and 42, but, and so maybe because the age difference wasn't as egregious as in My Dark Vanessa, this went over better, at least at the start, but I will leave you to make up your own decision about whether this relationship was okay or not. And I would say that 100% this relationship did romanticize the idea of the student-teacher relationship. But another book that I want to bring up, and it, because it is by Colleen Hoover, and it does the entire student-teacher thing, is Slammed. The thing that I want to mention about both The Pretty Liars relationship and uh, Slammed is that in both cases, the pair hook up before they meet in the classroom. So maybe that affects the dynamic as well. I'm not sure. I just want to make sure that all the facts are out there if you weren't familiar with the topic before. And then the other thing that I want to leave you off with is questioning what responsibilities do authors and publishers have in handling triggering or difficult or traumatizing topics like domestic violence and pedophilia in their novels. Personally, something that I've been thinking about a lot recently is should adult books have ratings in a similar way that movies have ratings with the motion picture associated rating system. This is the PG, PG-13, R, NC-17 rating because you will know what to expect when going into a movie theater if you get a PG film versus if you get an R-rated film. And yes, someone might be saying, okay, but in publishing, you have the middle grade, young adult, and adult, because new adult is not recognized officially by a lot of publishers. And you, those are the categories. And I'd say, sure, those are the categories. But when we are looking specifically at the adult category, you have books like 1984, which, although it is, you know, a very politically charged, uh, thought-provoking read, it isn't as 
I wouldn't say it is no anywhere near the trauma nightmare fuel inducing level as as famously a little life or a book that I've read tender as the flesh which was truly an experience that I think about daily because it was the images in that were so disgusting and visceral that I want to erase them from my head so the thing that I'm kind of curious about is how can we distinguish in the adult section of the bookstore or in the adult section of a library between the 1984s and the a little lifes it should there be some sort of rating on the back of on the backs of books a rating that would say how much heavy material or how dark the topics in this book get so that the uh, reader is better primed for it without necessarily knowing all the trigger warnings if they don't want to because I find that sometimes I don't want to look up trigger warnings because I'm scared that they will spoil an aspect of the book for me. I don't know. I also know that there are way, way, way more books published every year than movies. And so maybe it's just unrealistic for every single uh, book to be to be rated in that sense. But at the same time, I do, I do wonder if publishers don't have some sort of responsibility there. I don't know. Again, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyways, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. This is the first time that I'm doing a more serious style video discussing something that I think is very interesting in the book marketing space. And I'm not too sure where I stand on a few of these topics. So I'm very curious what your opinions are as well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.